All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program. And today we're going to be continuing on with our new save file, which, as you can see, has one flight in progress at the moment. Now, I was sent messages by a fair few of you who watch that the new update doesn't necessarily break save files. They suggest that you do update, but uh, it can recover quite a bit of what you had done. It's just a few problems with any missions you may have on the surface of Kerbin or on the surface of the moon. Those will most likely get messed up. But anything else out in space might possibly be fine, so I was kind of tempted to go back and try and load in our save from the, well, previous save file. But you know what? I decided to stick with this and just have a fresh start. And I haven't had as much of a chance to build as I was hoping uh, since the last episode. I've basically just gotten up one thing, which is the last project I kind of started on the last save file, which was the Exodus Station. It's what I hope to eventually be the sort of refueling platform for future deep space sort of missions. So we're just going to go over to it now. And there isn't really anything new here from last time you guys saw this. Uh, I haven't sent up any of the other pieces yet because I've just gotten this thing up here. But I wanted to bring you up to the Exodus Station for one key reason. Now, we all know that we've got IVA and different ones of the capsules, except for that one space plane one, which... Seriously, why don't they have one for that yet? No, hey, solar panel, look at that. Hello. But one thing that has been kind of missing was an internal view for these habitation modules. And in the new update, well, there is an interior now. Ooh, grab it, grab there. What is it with Jebediah and not wanting to grab onto the ladder? Remember last episode where I did those somersaults out of that rover? But yeah, oh well, what are you gonna do? It's Jeb. But if we load him into the habitation module, as you can see, he's got his helmet off now, and there's a different background. And if we actually go to the IVA view, well, look at that. We've got an internal view of the habitation module. And I am, well, I haven't actually been in here yet. I saw it on some Reddit posts. It's like, oh my god, I gotta go check that out. And so, yeah, you can actually now see your up to four Kerbals in each habitation module. And let's see, they have junk, rubbish, refuse, and trash. Excellent. You, you know, you gotta, you gotta make sure to differentiate between all of your junk and rubbish and so forth. And of course, food and not food, that's always good to distinguish between the two. We have laundry, very important, and what's... Oh, what's that? Oh, I can't see what's above my head, too. Toothbrushes. Ha! <laughs> Lovely. And, oh, what does that say? Board games. Oh, wonderful. We probably got some Monopoly in there, you know, something fun like that. Of course, that's the hatch that leads to space. Nice, I like it, I like it. Now I'm a little I'm a little disappointed in this. I've got it on full res textures, but this cork board here is pretty low res. I mean I can't really tell much detail in those pictures, which is a little sad. I mean we've got post-it notes and some of the other capsules that you can read, but that one not so much. But oh well, I am still excited that you can actually see inside these now. That is just wonderful. Oh, and I can look out that porthole there. I always love that. So something a lot of people don't seem to realize is that you can click on windows, uh, double click on them to center your view there. And hey, Chevadai, how's it going? You look happy, my friend. Very, very happy. As you should be in space. Oh, we have more science and science under Jebediah. Lovely. Good job. I didn't notice those before. I guess kind of hard to see from uh, this position. Yeah. Can't really see those things, but good to know we have compartments for science. That is always an important thing to have. But you know what? We should probably put him back in the command module. So let's EVA again, Jebediah. Come on, man. Grab hold of things. Jeez. And in you go, back into the uh, cupola. 
And yeah, right now this thing is at about, oh, it's, well, 500,000 meter orbit. I'm thinking I'm probably going to put it to a million orbit eventually. Uh, but I don't know, I may leave it here. Uh, I don't want to make it too far off. But I'll decide that in time. But what we're going to do today is do a little bit of playing around. <laughs> I just kind of feel like having a bit of fun. So, all right, loaded back up. Let's go into the vehicle assembly building and load up where it did it go. What did I name it? Oh, yeah, as you can see, I have loaded in all of our ships from the previous save so we can rebuild those various missions that we left unfinished. Uh, but yes, here's what we're going to be playing with today. A single stage to orbit satellite. Now, I am, I am excited to try this thing. I was poking around on Reddit earlier and saw this essentially a person who sent up all the way up into orbit a small craft which was uh, this little, oh, I always forget the name of it, over oh, on that tab already, the Probodobine, or Probodobine, uh, there we go, Octo-2 capsule, and then he had it a battery, and then these two fuel tanks, and that engine. But I'm wanting this to be, like, a cheap method of launching a satellite network. He basically just launched this thing up, put it into orbit, uh, to see if it would work, and I'm, I want to try doing that myself. But I wanted to have more of a function than just launching a fuel canister up into orbit. So I've put these four small solar panels on it, rather than this battery, because this battery has a mass of 0.05, but each of these little solar panels has a mass of 0.005. Now granted, all in all, it will have more drag with four of these rather than one battery, but it will have a longer lifespan if I can get it up into space. Now, this person on Reddit was able to su successfully do it, and I'm hoping I can too, but I have no idea. You all know my piloting abilities aren't exactly good, but I'm hoping it'll work out. I think it'd be cool to have a single stage to orbit satellite method. We could build a crappy little quick satellite network in a single launch phase, just from the launcher up into orbit in one go, no stages or asparagus staging, anything like that. Just a tiny little ship. Now, I am I know that I, I saw the pictures on his Reddit post, but I'm still kind of having a hard time believing that this thing can get into space in one go. I haven't tried it yet, so I don't know how this is going to work. But you know what? There's no staging to check like I normally do, so let's just launch and see what happens. Okay, we are on the launch pad with our tiny little spaceship. Let's turn on the technically non-existent SAS. I mean, the little ca the little uh, command pod. It does have a tiny bit, but not much. Because uh, an SAS module would actually add a lot of weight to this thing. So, eh, let's see how this thing works. And uh, three, two, and one. Oh, look at it go. It's, it's, it's a cute little, cute little rocket. I'm going to turn on the fine-tune controls, because I'm assuming that's probably what I'm going to need for something like this. Uh, the new SAS system, even though I am enjoying it so far, I've been playing around a lot with space planes, <laughs> which is the main reason I haven't been able to do much more construction on the space station, is I keep launching planes going, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm liking this new SAS, I'm not that horrible of a pilot with it. Though, that's kind of a lie, I still am a completely awful pilot, but it does make my life a little easier. But for rockets, uh, I don't know. I kind of like the old SAS would kind of snap you back to the point you're wanting. Uh, but this will give us, I think, a more smoothly controlled flight. So uh, it worked with the Exodus Station, though I must say it was wobblier than in the previous version. That thing was shaking all over the place, uh, but it still flew straight up. Uh, I was surprised at it, honestly. But it worked, and wow, this thing's actually going pretty well so far. We're already at 
eight kilometers up. We're not even halfway through our fuel. This thing might actually make it to space. Oh, wow. We are at our 10K mark. Let's just angle this baby right over here. And this... I do not think that this is going to make it up to the 100,000 meter mark that I like to do. So I'm just going to try and put this thing at about 75,000 meters. I, that's a good point in space. You can still get a good orbit from that. But, you know, it's lower. So I think that'll be the way to go. And that's also one thing. I, I, don't, I didn't really notice it previously, but I think... Yeah, because this wasn't in the last version. As you can hear, or not hear, rather, we're not hearing the horrible, noisy uh, sounds of the engine. Oh, I went too far. I was paying attention to the nav ball. Ooh, that's going to cost me, I think. Uh, but yeah, when you go into map view now, it does seem to cut the sound, which is nice. I actually really like that. Uh, makes life a little less noisy in the game. Let's see, that's a hundred... Ooh, sixty... Ooh, that's... Let's play around with this a bit. Whoop. 76. Uh, let's bring that back. Oop. Nope, 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 nope. Bring it back. There we go. And... You know what? I like that. Let's, let's go with that. I think that'll be fun. So, back over here. This thing... <laughs> it's working so far. We do not have much fuel left, but we don't have that much to go. We just need 46 seconds of a good burn to get us in place in an actual orbit in a single stage with this tiny little thing. I'm... Well, quite honestly, I'm shocked that it's working at the moment. <laughs> so we need to start... Our burn at the 23 second mark. And hopefully we can go for the full 46 seconds with 21 liquid fuel left. Oh man, that is worrisome. Uh, I hope this works. I really do, because this would be fun if this does work and we can use it as a cheap method of launching tiny little satellites. Okay, we are going with that tiny little engine. Oh man. Ooh, a little bit a little bit finicky to control. Let's go back to the map view actually. Focus on uh Kerbin here. Whoop, 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 whoop. Wasn't paying attention to my controls. There we go. Okay, come on, come on. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we've got ooh. We need a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. 78 and 82. We are in orbit <laughs> with 3.17 liquid fuel left. Oh, wow. But yet we're here. We are in orbit. Our single stage two orbit satellite has successfully made it. Let's actually face this thing towards the sun so that we get some electrical charge out of it. Oh, look at it go. It's already has a full battery now. Oh man, this thing is really wobbly because it is just so, so darn tiny. Yeah, that, that, okay. The, yeah, this is definitely one thing I miss of the old SAS. You turned on the SAS and it snap you back into place. This one, you still have to fight it a bit, but oh well, oh well. Other than that, it is a much better control system. But yeah, we have a successful microsatellite in space launched in a single stage. Ah, I'm kind of, I'm curious about this now, if we could, how much we can add to this. I mean, I'm not going to add much, but I think maybe an antenna or two onto it, maybe one or two scientific pieces of instrumentation. Uh, that would be fun. But yeah, this is... This is nice. I'm very happy with this little single stage to orbit satellite. We could use this to set up cheap, effective, quick to launch networks of communication satellites or something. You know me, I like to pretend that things actually are for a reason in this game since we don't have a career mode yet. But yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to uh, head back to that forum, or not forum post, but Reddit post, and because I was. I was skeptical, but man, we are here. It has worked. And 
I am ecstatic. I am very happy about this. And I hope you guys are too. I'd say give this a try. It's actually a cool little design to launch up into space, so I definitely suggest to you all to give this a go. It's a really simple, basic little design, but it gets into space. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Kind of a short one, I'm still extraordinarily busy in my you know, non-YouTube life, <laughs> and uh, so not a huge amount of time. But yeah, I hope to see you guys for the next episode where we're probably going to be expanding on the Exodus station, perhaps. I do want to build up that fuel station a bit more, uh, but uh, maybe not. Maybe we'll do something else. Who knows? <laughs> but until then, thank you for watching, everyone. And as always, my friends, have a good one. <laughs>